Praise ye the Lord. This is Pastor Glenda Gray once again coming to you from Zion Ministries with a word from the Lord. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at the book of Habakkuk. This is one of the minor prophets that we see in the Old Testament. Uh, and I'm going to uh, read um, the scripture to you, and then we'll talk about uh, what is going on in the book of Habakkuk. In chapter number two, it, it, it began, began with verse one. It says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Now we're all familiar with that last part, the just shall live by faith. We've heard that we may not have known that it was Habakkuk who was saying it. But let me tell you a little bit about the story of Habakkuk. Uh, the children of Israel are going through because they have turned away from God. And as God has often done, has done over and over again, when we turn away from God, God will use our enemies to chastise us. And the scripture says that those he loveth, he chasteneth. it. So God does it for our good. Uh, Habakkuk is trying to understand because the Chaldeans are very wicked people. And he's asking God in verse no, uh, number 13 uh, in chapter one, it says, thou art pure eyes than to behold evil and cast not look on, look on iniquity. Wherefore, lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously and behold thy, t and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he. In other words, he said, Lord, you bring in somebody who's way more wicked than we are to chastise us. How can you allow this to happen? And so he goes into the tower to wait for an answer from God. First and foremost, the right thing that he did do was that he did go to God and then he waited for God. He didn't come up with his own answer. He waited for God to answer him. And God lets him know, you know, in other words, that uh, he reigned upon the just and the unjust, that the good are sometimes going to have to go through with the bad person. But for those of us who are living uh, according to God's will and according to God's way, we need to learn how to wait upon the Lord. We're reminded of that, that in Isaiah, it says, um, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount over the wings like an eagle. And it says an eagle because the wings of an eagle are very strong, very strong. Uh, so we'll mount over the wings like an eagle, we'll run and not get weary, we'll walk and we will not faint. So it's encouragement for all of us to wait upon God. I know there's so much going on right now. We look up, we see the pandemic. One day it say wear a mask, the next day it say take it off. The next day they may come back again and say wear it again. We're so confused about what's going on. And then we are concerned about our lives and our faith. But, you know, and Isaiah reminded us that, you know, that the, um, the, uh, flower fadeth. Uh, and it's letting us know that life is short. You know, there's one scripture that says life is like a vapor. No matter how long you live, life is short. And we've got to learn how to make the most of walking with God uh, in this short time that we have. Whether you live to be a uh, one or you live to be a hundred and one, life is still short. But what is not short is eternity. Eternity is forever. And so we've got to prepare ourselves for that. And so here God is telling Habakkuk, he said, I'm going to send you out here. You question me, but I'm going to send you out here and I'm going to have you to give a message unto my people. And I want you to write it up on uh, the tablets, just like he had uh, Moses to come up and get the Ten Commandments on that. And he said, I want you to write it in such a way that it is plain. And those of us who are preaching today, God wants us to make it plain. Don't try to give the people every large word you've ever learned when you were in college or seminary or wherever you went to get further education, but just make it plain so that the, even those who are running can read it. In other words, even those who are uneducated sitting in your audience may understand what you are saying. What good is the message if the message is going over the head of everybody who's sitting in the audience? God doesn't care about your intelligence. 
Look who Jesus chose as his 12 uh, disciples. And there was only one who may have been educated. That was Matthew. The rest of them were, were uh, a fisherman, uneducated. But God shows us that he can take the uneducated and send them out wherever he wants to. Look at how John wrote uh, the book of John and reveal to us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And it was life. And the life was the light of the world. So we know that God can take an uneducated person. God does not care about doctorates and all of those things. God cares about your heart. Are you walking with him? Are you listening to him? Are you following him? Are you obeying him? God is not thinking about any of these other things we're talking about. God is not physical. God is a spirit and they who worship him must. We must worship him in spirit and in truth as God lets us know. Jesus lets us know in John chapter four, as he's speaking to the Samaritan woman, stop trying to have educated religion. That is not going to get us anywhere. But when we begin to know that it's about faith and not faith the size of a mustard seed because there is no such scripture as faith the size of a mustard seed. But there is scripture that says if you have faith as a mustard seed and then there's another scripture that lets us know what that means because it reminds us that it starts off as a very small uh, a seed but as it grows to become a large, so large that even the birds can make their nest in it. And that's what God is calling us to do is to stop having faith the size of. Because when it comes time for trial and tribulation and we've got to come up against the wiles of Satan, for those of us whose faith is only the size of a black eyed pea, we have already lost the battle. But for those of us who know what God has done for us, that God has uh, helped us through dangers seen and unseen, that he's been a doctor in a sick room. Can anybody get, be a witness for me? He's been a doctor in a sick room. He's been a lawyer in a courtroom. Look, I can testify to all of those things because he's been that for me. And because I know what God can do, my faith has increased. My faith is not where it was when I first accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I have grown because I have walked more and more with God. And because I know that my God is real. Can't nobody tell me that God is not real. Can't nobody tell me that Jesus is not the Savior. I will stand on God's word because I know God's word is true. On Christ the solid rock, I stand all other ground. It's sinking sand. I trust in God's word. I believe in God's word. And so God is having a back of the come out and let it be plain that my people may understand that we need God through this journey. God, Jesus gave us one instruction, basically, for those who came after him, that we are to preach repentance. We know that the very first sermon that Jesus preached was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. When John the Baptist was preaching, we see it, see him saying, I repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. But all of us today want to preach, oh, everything is going to be all right. Hey, how far has that gotten us? We see that everything is not all right. Not with the pandemic, not with uh, uh, the, the threat of war. Because we do know that Putin is waiting for the United States to do anything for them to want to come over here to fight against us. And so we've got to make sure that if we want God to be on our side, that we've got to stay on his, as he said to Ace, he said, I will be with you as long as you are with me. God is calling us. And I'm going to make this as plain as I can as he gave the instructions to Habakkuk. God is calling for us to repent. And that doesn't mean just saying you sorry. That being to circumcise your heart and stop earning the wages of sin because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, hear this today. 
The gift of God is eternal life. And God wants you to receive that reward of eternal life. But as Hebrews says, we've got to be very careful that we do not fall short of the promise that God has made with us. And so we've got to make sure that we stand on God's word and do what thus says the Lord. So now is the time to repent. If you're out of sorts with God, if you're not doing what thus says the Lord, if you're more concerned about the world, your relationship with the world than with God, repent of your sins and turn back to God. He is a God of healing. He's a God of deliverance. He is a forgiving God and he wants us to come to him. God is so merciful. He's so good and he is real. And we've got to trust in his holy word. And so as God is speaking to Habakkuk, he said, I know who I've called. I know what I have allowed to go on, but I'm doing it so that my people will know that they need to change their ways. And God is reminding us that we need to change our ways. We've got to turn to God. We've got to come back to him. And God will is so loving, so merciful that if we turn to him, he will forgive us of our sins. But we're not going to get off. He's going to punish us as much as God loves us. He's going to punish us if we don't do what thus says the Lord. So we don't want to go into Babylon. We want to be able to uh, worship God with freedom, but not in the freedom of man, but in the freedom of God. We want to shed this bondage of sin that we are now carrying around with us. And we want to pick up uh, that whole armor of God and put it on and use that shield of faith, that shield of faith that's large enough to cover us as we go through this battle, because there is going to be a battle. Remember, the scripture says that when we begin to hear about the rumors of wars, uh, wars and rumors of wars, and we begin to have the plagues, that this is the beginning of sorrow. So now is our time. Now, I'm, I might be like Jeremiah last, a couple of weeks ago. I, I knew I had become like the weeping prophet who was trying to warn the people to let them know but thus says the Lord, God told him to put on uh, 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 the yoke and he put it on. It was made of wood and here comes the, the, the false prophet breaking it. And God said, now I want you to go back and put on one of steel. The false prophet didn't, didn't realize that he was causing God's people to have to go through even more. Because he was disobeying God. Just like David. I love David. But because David did that which was against God's will, he caused God's people to have to perish. So many of them to have to perish when God punished them with pestilence. And so we don't want that to happen now. We want to come back to God. Come and buy from him. And because when we buy from him, we know it's going to be the right thing. It won't be anything that's tarnished, that nothing that will fade away. A God word will never fade away. And that's what Isaiah reminds us in uh, Isaiah 40, that God's word will never fade away. We will die. A new crop of people will come up and they will die. And it will continue to people will live and die. But God's word will never change. Uh, Jesus reminds us in, in, in Mark chapter, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter five, uh, verse 17. He said, uh, he did not come to destroy the law or the prophet, but through him that it might be fulfilled. He said, not one jot, not one tittle of the law shall pass away until heaven and earth have passed away. And we have the same heaven, same earth still here today as it was when I was a little girl. A lot more polluted. We don't see the stars like we used to, but yet it is still there. And so God wants us to know that he has not changed and we need to come back to him. He didn't, doesn't need to come to us because he hasn't moved. But we have moved so far away from God that it's now time for us to come back to him that we may be able to receive that promise that God has made with us. Remember that when we were baptized and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that what we were really doing when we were signing a contract, Jesus signed it with his blood. And we signed that contract when we went down into that water, we were buried with Jesus Christ. And when we came out, we were resurrected with him. And now we're supposed to be new creatures. And, and if it, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things, not some of the things we do, but all things 
things have become new. And God wants us to become those new creatures that we may be able to one day stand in his presence and hear him call out our name and say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's all I have for you today. I pray that what I have said today will help you on this journey and that God will keep you and strengthen you until we meet again.